Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us on another episode of Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah and I'm here with Pastor Craig Roders. What's up? And that's not it. We're also here with Pastor Morgan Whoa. Roders. Hey guys. And we are going to talk about commitment. So that is something that we've been discussing a lot as a church and we've been talking about how important it is to be committed to one church. And so many people can accuse us of, oh, that means that you guys are just trying to get everyone to go to your church. You're the only right church. And no, we want you to be committed wherever God calls you to be. And so today we're going to talk about church commitment, not just church membership, which a lot of people do, but also um, we're going to talk about accountability and how important that is. So number one is the church body is God's final appeal to unrepentant believers. And so that goes with Matthew chapter 18, uh, verses 15 through 17. So I can read it and then... Mm -hmm. um, pass it back to you guys it says if another believer sins against you go privately and point out the offense if the other person listens and listens and confesses it you have won that person back but if you are unsuccessful take one or two others with you and go back again so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses verse 17 if the person still refuses to listen take your case to the church then if he or she won't accept the church's decision, treat that person as a pagan or a corrupt tax collector. So we're focusing on the church today and, and the importance of coming together, right? And so I'll hand it to you guys, but how can you make judgments mm -hmm. you know, against someone? How can the church make a judgment against someone if there's no such thing as a church, right? And so what is the importance of the body of believers and doing that with un unrepentant uh, believers. Yeah, I think that the important part is, like, let's just say someone is in a certain sin or just like what's talking about here in Matthew 18, then a lot of times people, they try to like, they don't, they try to hide away and they don't want anyone to like know they're sinning. So that's why they love churches that they can go in and out and no one knows who they are. No one know, like asks them, how are you doing or holds them accountable. Mm -hmm. But that this is why it's so important because especially as young people, there's so many things that life throws at us and temptations and things. That's why we need brothers and sisters in Christ to hold us accountable. And that's why it talks about here as having a definable group that you that can go up to you and say hey mm -hmm. like how are you doing and check on you but let's just say a church does that to you but you're like hey i don't go here man like leave me alone then that's what they're saying here is like you can't just say hey don't don't talk to me because i actually go to this church but then that church is like wait i thought you went to that church and yeah. but you also go to this church on Wednesday and and it just gets confusing where yeah. I think the importance of this is accountability and we see this everywhere we see big time pastors falling and failing and we we and it's sad because I believe that so many times the churches are so big and we're not putting down any big churches because you know we're a smaller church but how can you truly hold people accountable and check up on them when there's so many people that you're just like, I don't even know this guy's name. So how, let alone, am I going to say, hey, are, how, are you struggling with this or that? So that's why um, for us, I believe that um, a lot of times people can be like, oh, your church, you guys um, are really into holiness. And, <laughs> and sometimes it's like too much. <laughs> but when you see it here, we're not trying to be holy just for holiness sake we're doing this because it pleases the heart of god and he's looking for a pure bride a pure and spotless bride and that's and where says no one can see the lord unless, unless he's holy, he's holy. So and so of, i think that right here this is a perfect example of why it's important to find where god is calling you to be a church where you can get accountability where um so then when you look at it is this church how to make judgment on this man and then the church had to deal with it and so if you're not in a church that's not going to happen so that's where mm -hmm. we we don't believe that you have to be a member and go through all these classes but we we do believe that there should be a church where you have um where you know the pastor the elders and different people where they can check up on you and see how you're doing and mm -hmm. you can get discipleship so yeah. and before you talk because we have I won't the, stop. the <laughs> yeah you won't stop no uh, but the second point goes with it so i think i should bring it up too yeah um, it says the church is responsible to remove unrepent 
yep. repentant sinners from membership. Amen. And like Mara said, it's not like we have membership cards here or anything like that, mm -hmm. but it's more of a volunteer membership, kind of like um, in the sense like a family. When you join, yep. you know, you're part of the family. Um, it's not like you sign all these contracts and everything <laughs> like that. Yeah. But it it is the responsibility of the church to remove these people yeah. because it could be a harm mm -hmm. to the to body the of Christ. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's a sensitive thing, right? So it's not like anyone can come off the street and just come in and say, yeah, that person, give him the coconut, right? <laughs> like, try <laughs> to him to get him and tell him to leave. You know, a person off the street can't do that because they're not a part There's of the no body connection. of Christ. There's no connection, yeah. And so I think that um, we need to make sure that we're not just jumping from church to church thinking that we have a say because we're not really part of that family if we just keep jumping. So yeah, I'll exactly. hand it to you back. Yeah, I don't know. Now you said it all. No, <laughs> I, I would say this. like An interesting story to me is how I had this one lady telling me, hey, help my husband. He's doing pornography right in front of me. Mm. Hmm. That's pretty bad. Like He's yeah. just not even caring anymore. And so I said, okay, so you want me to confront him? She goes, yeah, I've tried. He won't listen. So I want, so the three of us met. I said, hey, you know, you shouldn't be sexually immoral. Don't look upon any unclean thing, you know, uh, you know, porno, pornea, you know, sexually immoral. And so he agreed. But then all of a sudden, a week later, he felt from the Lord it was time for him to move on from mm. this church. Mm. And his wife went along with it. I'm like, and, you know, wait a second. You should be saying, hey, honey, could it be, could it be that uh, because you're convicted, you don't like what's being said? And that's the thing is that we have to be committed, just like a marriage, right? Because yeah, exactly. people, oh, I don't love you anymore. You, you, you don't let me look at porno. That's what commitment is. Amen. Because commitment mm -hmm. means, why do you have to make a commitment? Because it means that you're going to be tempted at times to say, oh, there's a prettier guy or prettier, uh, a prettier guy, mm -hmm. a handsomer guy, a prettier girl. But you need to say, no, I'm committed to this because you can't have true intimacy Amen. without commitment. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing with the church. People, what I see is everyone wants to, as we're going to talk about other things like fear of missing out. Yeah. But we all, it's like we want uh, we want when it's good, but when it gets a little hard, like discipline, we don't like it. Like we have a new puppy and nobody wants to discipline it because nobody wants I the will. puppy. Yeah, Mariah will. <laughs> but nobody wants the puppy to be mad at him, right? Mm -hmm. My trim is putting a leash on him or a little collar and he didn't like it because, oh, he hates me. But we have to realize <laughs> what the Lord disciplines those he loves. And if mm -hmm. we love people, yes. we need to discipline them and speak the truth in love, right? Pay for the wounds of a friend better than kiss some enemy. But a lot of times we think, oh, if we really love someone, you know, there's an old song called Love Story where it says, if you love someone, you never have to say you're sorry. Mm -hmm. That's a bunch of baloney. If you love yeah. someone, you'll yeah. say you're sorry, you'll be humble. And so anyway, so that's it. Where I see is that a lot of people just don't want commitment yeah. because that means accountability. Yep. And that's the very, and that's why I want to say this, we haven't said already. That's why the church, in my opinion, is 25 miles wide, 25,000 miles wide, but only an eighth inch deep because there's no accountability. Mm -hmm. And that's how we become mature. Notice what Jesus said, go and make disciples and just get them saved and leave them alone. No, he says, go and make disciples, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. He says, and teach them to obey mm -hmm. all that I've uh, uh, commanded you. So that's the key is teaching them how to obey. And that takes commitment that takes discipleship now i know i'll say this just to be the devil's advocate that discipleship had a bad meaning a bad word because yeah. there was kind of a, a the shepherding movement mm -hmm. where you had to ask who do i marry what job should i have now we don't agree with that that's ridiculous but we do believe that if we show you something in the word especially if you come here that you would go oh wow that's in the word mm -hmm. i might not like it right no discipline at the time seems pleasant but painful but because it's God, I will submit to it. Yeah. Amen. Because they're really not submitting to us, they're submitting to the word. So that's yeah, first yeah. Corinthians yeah. five, twelve through thirteen says that like we're not supposed to judge those outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're already judged by God, right? Amen. But we're supposed to like look at the fruit of people's lives in the church. And if you see someone doing something bad, you're not supposed to let them continue on if yeah. you know that they're harming themselves, right? So, and, and like you said, Morgan, really good. You said it's also not just we, we should care about them harming themselves because the Bible says about holiness, mm. no one shall see the Lord. But the other thing is, and we're going to talk about this, I think, a little later, but is the, the 1 Corinthians 5 about a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Mm. Then we let unconfessed sin in the church, it just kind of spreads like yeast, it says, mm -hmm. unleavened. It, it, it's a lot easier for us to sin than for us to obey God. And so we got to really 
hold each other accountable, hold ourselves accountable to the Lord, but hold each other accountable and spur, as it says in uh, Hebrews, one another on to love and good deeds because it's so easy, right? You don't have to plant weeds, yeah. I say, right? A lot of people are planting weed now, but it's not right. No, but <laughs> you don't have to plant weed, but you do have to work to plant flowers and plant mm-hmm. good things. And so we have to realize that that's part of the curse, and we have to know that our flesh very easily tends towards sin. Yeah. But we have to commit to walk by the Spirit. That doesn't happen naturally for mm-hmm. our flesh. Amen. Yeah, I'll read that. It's uh, 1 Corinthians 5, mm-hmm. 12 through 13. It isn't my responsibility to judge outsiders, but it certainly is your responsibility to judge those inside the church who are sinning. Verse 13, God will judge those on the outside, but as the scriptures say, you must remove the evil person from among you. So, yeah, and that's, you know, we're not supposed to, again, judge outsiders. They're already judged. Um, they're already condemned because of their own sin. And we once were like that, but God has saved us by his grace and his strength. But now... If we are the body of Christ, we're supposed to watch out for one another. And it's a command of God, right? We're not, of course, we're not their savior, but we are supposed to, I mean, the Bible said we, we are our brother's keeper, right? It's not mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, but they're just doing whatever. I don't care about them. But we should care, right? And there's a balance, you know, there's, it's kind of a paradoxical. We, we need to make sure that we're working out our own salvation, right? Because sometimes Peter would be looking at other people and mm-hmm. stuff. But God's saying, look at, make sure you're right with God. But then once you're right with God, yeah. make sure that take you take a log in your own eye before you yeah. take a splint yeah. on your brothers. Yeah, yeah. And and then to give some background to this, First Corinthians five. This is an, in my opinion, you know, if you read the New Living, it says sleeping. This man was sleeping with his mm. stepmother. It says mm-hmm. now. It says, if you read First Corinthians 5, it says, even the pagans didn't do this. Now, I used to be a pretty hardcore sinner before Christ, and uh, I know a lot of guys would sleep with their stepmom and have no problem with it. Mm-hmm. But sleeping with your own mother, even the world says something's bad about that. Yeah. So I think, my opinion is, it's his real mother. It's a Jerry Springer show. It's really bad. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, but these Corinthians were thinking, we're so loving, accepting. Doesn't that sound like the world today? Yep. Oh, I just accepted. Hey, who am I to judge? Right? That's the number one scripture now. You know, Matthew, uh, seven. Uh, Matthew 7, 1. But who am I to judge? And But Paul goes, what are you talking about? Of course, you, I've already judged this guy, and I'm not even with you. And he says, we're to judge those inside the church because, as he will say, a little leaven leavens a whole lump. But hear this, and we're going to talk about this, and I'm going to let you end it. But... If the church didn't have value to this man, remember they said, remove this man. Mm -hmm. If you won't repent, remove him. And it says later in 1 Corinthians 2, it says this man, he says now, Paul says, welcome him back. So here before they're so liberal, they were just saying, hey, we're not going to judge. Now they got mad because they they were rebuked by Paul. So they kick him out now and they say, we don't want you back. But now it says in 2 Corinthians 2 that he has so much sorrow that he says he has sorrow beyond sorrow, welcome him back, lest he like basically kill himself or just lose heart. So now they were like, we don't want to welcome him back. He's he he made us look bad before you, Paul. But there's that balance that you said, the mm-hmm. paradox where we want to be, we want to judge sin, mm-hmm. we want to hate sin, but love the sinner, and we don't want to. Yeah. Now, when someone's repentant, we are merciful, we're gracious. It's only when someone says, "Hey, I know it's wrong. I'm sleeping with my mom, but I don't care." Yeah, there's grace, right? Mm-hmm. Then we have to say, well. You can do that. That's your prerogative, but you're not going to do it here. You're not going to do it in the house of God. And that's what we need to say. And I know that's not cool, but I mean, again, that's scripture. That's not Mm -hmm. our opinion, right? Let God be true and every man be a liar. That's what the word of God says. And so what happens is, but the point I want to make, and this is what we're making here, is that if church did not have value to this man, if he could just jump to the church down the street, he'd go, I don't care. I never liked you guys anyway. Mm-hmm. But that's why we need to make on our own, not by, like you said, Mariah, not because we're committed through a contract like a lot of churches. You know, I remember when I was a Baptist mm-hmm. boy, I had to sign a contract. And when I mm-hmm. left the church, I had to sign a release form and I had to give blood. And no, but I mean, I'm just like, no, your commitment is your commitment, right? Because mm-hmm. just because you make a marriage commitment, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean it's anything unless you really commit in your heart that that commitment is real, yeah. Yeah. right? Because a lot of people break that commitment every day. Mm-hmm. But you need to be a man or woman of integrity that says, when I commit to this church, I will not leave this church, if, if God's called me here, unless until God, God releases me, mm-hmm. right? Or, or unless the church is in blatant sin and the pastor is and he's not repentant. But I will not just hop yeah, because yeah. that's the thing. Just like I won't hop from a marriage as a Christian. Yeah. That's the key. Because if you don't have that commitment, you hear this. I'll just say this. 
you will not be a mature Christian. Mm-hmm. You might have all that. We know a lot of people, don't we, that can say tons of scriptures, say it so eloquent, pray, oh God, where are you? You know, these really cr- eloquent prayers of just like such intimacy and you know it's baloney. Yeah. Mm. But yet they don't, their life. And what did Jesus say? Wisdom is proved right by her children. Amen. If we really li- know the word of God, we should be living the word of God. Our life should scream the reality of Christ's fruitfulness in our lives. Amen. Now hear me, guys. Let's preface this. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying you can never go visit a church. No. I'm not saying you can't hear a special speaker at a church. Amen. But I'm saying you shouldn't be going back and forth every week to a, a church. You shouldn't have, I do this church on Wednesday. I do this church on Sunday. I do this church on Wednesday night or Thursday or Sunday night. I do this church on Thursday. You should have a body that like Mariah said, that you're committed to where they know you and they can speak into where you have welcomed them, Mm -hmm. the leadership and your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that have place. You've welcomed them to hold you accountable to about purity, especially because it's not hard being single. Is it being pure, Mm -hmm. right? Be pure, pure. What you're looking at on the internet, pure, what you're watching, pure with your boyfriend or girlfriend. We need that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we reject the, hey, man, just back off. Leave me alone. And when we bounce, we have no accountability. Mm -hmm. And then we wonder why I know all this scripture, but I really don't have the peace and see the fruitfulness of God in mind because we're not living, right? What did you say? If you love me, you will obey my commands. It doesn't mean you won't ever mess up, but you won't you won't you won't move in with your girlfriend and go, yeah, I kind of messed up. No, that's a willful mess up. Or mm-hmm. you're sleeping every day with your boyfriend or girlfriend. That's willful, and you're not going to have the peace of God, right? Mm-hmm. It says First Corinthians five says, sexually immoral will not. Or First Corinthians six, I'm sorry, says those who are fornicators, adulterers, swindlers, drunkards will not. Inherit mm-hmm. the kingdom of God. So you can know all the scripture and you can call yourself a Christian, but if you're continuing those fornicators, meaning they're doing it in it, you will not inherit mm-hmm. the kingdom of God. You're an adulterer, you will not. Homosexual, you will not. Now, if you're someone who used to struggle with that and maybe still has that propensity to struggle, that's a different thing. But if you're willing, if you say, I'm a Christian homosexual, or I'm a Christian fornicator, or I'm a Christian adulterer, the Bible says you're not a true Christian mm-hmm. because you will not inherit the kingdom of God. And how can you be a Christian? and not be saved amen mm-hmm. amen and i think commitment also goes more than just going to one church you know you also need to actually be going to that church consistently because, yeah, yeah, that's because a, yeah, a yes, lot yes. of people are like hey i go to that yeah. church but they're only there once or twice a year and yeah. it's like that's not a true commitment think yeah. about a relationship right if you're like yeah i'm committed to my wife but you only see her once or twice <laughs> a year then that's kind of i understand yeah if you have a job that takes you away but still a big strain right Amen. big strain on the relationship so well, you might have you might have a happy that. marriage because right there would be a struggle <laughs> not, not but you wouldn't know them yeah <laughs> Yeah, and then yeah, yeah, and then you won't even be happy because the okay. neglect too, mm-hmm. right? And, and we also see that a lot with like people who go to different churches and different things. Um, the sad thing is they don't get to serve anywhere. Like mm-hmm. there's not really anywhere they get to serve. They're just takers. And I see that especially in my generation, being a Gen Z and then millennials. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of times it's like, what can you do for me? Like, what's the best option for me? Instead of just like, no, I just want to serve you. I want to not just serve the pastors in the, ch- the church, but it's serving God. And I think a lot of times the thing that I see the struggle, especially we're going to talk about it later, like the fear of missing out and FOMO is how young people just want to go church to church to find a spouse or because, oh, this is really good. And this is I like this series they're doing or I like this. Instead of, no, I'm just going to be faithful where God called me to be. Because even another thing that like my dad was talking about to not leave somewhere unless God tells you to is Mm -hmm. that means you have to hear the voice of God. That means that you actively have to also read your Bible and be seeking and abiding. And like my dad always says, Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom, live live righteously, and then all these things will be added unto you. So I think that a lot of times we seek after the perfect church or the perfect group or the perfect coffee bar or all the amenities instead of god where do you want me to go like where is the best place for me to serve where do you want me to be and then if you're feeling weird about something go to the pastors talk to them don't just jump ship and leave because something's wrong talk to them and say hey in the bible i was reading the bible and <laughs> this is what it says <laughs> and i think that you're a little off and see what they say and if you feel the holy spirit saying hey 
I want you to leave. You can leave. You've done your best. You've done your part. Mm. You're only leaving because God told you to. Like when you think of Eli, he had terrible sons. His sons were awful. They were like sleeping with prostitutes and all this stuff. And Samuel, he was still faithful because God told him to serve. Um, Not because, you know, Eli's family was amazing and everything, but because God didn't tell him to leave. So that's the point is even if there is something like that, that is an extreme case. Mm But you should be, unless God tells you to leave and the Holy Spirit is guiding you and you've done everything you can in mm-hmm. the power of the Holy Spirit, then that's when, um, and I think what we should talk about later too is what about the people who are out there saying, I can't find a good church. There's no good mm-hmm. church. There's no church. Or people could even be listening to us and they're like, I love your church. I wish I could be in Tucson. I wish I could be where you guys are. And I just watch you guys online and that's my church. I would say to you, no, it isn't because you need to find a church that you can actually go to a local church, a local church, a local church church that you can also be giving your full tithe, your 10 percent and a church that you can be actively serving. And so I know that's a lot, but well, but really, I mean, if we never get to that point again, it comes down to being intimate with God and having Mm. a personal relationship with him to where he can say, hey maybe check out that church and then you go there and don't be critical. Don't be super like offended with everything. Really ask Holy Spirit, is this a church that is Bible believing? Like, are they going, they don't have to, because I know Calvary, I encourage Calvary's because they go verse by verse, but also they're not crazy charismatic where they're like, all this stuff where they just they have no um decent in order or anything like that Mm -hmm. that's something and also you don't want it to be where they're well depends on what you believe but we believe that um the gifts are for today so just pray that you find a church that is balanced Mm -hmm. and and also maybe if you aren't in a church that's perfectly balanced that you can somehow get involved and help talk to them not be a pastor or anything but like just share these verses like what do you think about this or that um, lovingly. And so I I know that was a lot with having to do with church, but I know a lot like, of people neglect church because of COVID, especially. And they're mm-hmm. like, I don't have time to try to find a good church, but I'm just letting you know right now that's important. So, And I like that um, sometimes people are like, why do you focus so much on this? But the I like how you said being intimate with God, yeah. because it's not just about, uh, oh, just the church. Mm-hmm. God loves the church, Amen. but you also need to have See, really, walk. the question is, are you committed to him? Amen. Because if you're committed to him, he then loves be, his church. And he yeah. says, and to you'll be fed to, by him yourself. Yeah, yeah. you're you'll not be fed trying by to him go to yourself, church and get filled. And the church isn't your everything. Amen. It's not supposed to. God's Amen. your everything. He just says, yeah, go to church. There's a lot of good benefits from it. But we, we don't just go there for the church. It's yeah. really for God. And we go there to draw near to him. And I think about that commitment is um you see many times Jesus was always seeing who's committed. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. John six sixty six, right? Mm-hmm. It says many left that day. So yeah. he wasn't afraid to then say the hard heard. things then and then to offend people Amen. at times. And so, and remember, like my dad says, you could be as close to Jesus as you want to be. Mm-hmm. There's certain different types of disciples. There's 500, 70, 12, the three. And so you can be as committed as you want to be, right? And God, God's not holding you back from being committed. You're the one who is holding yourself back. Yeah. So this goes beyond just being committed to church, yeah. but ultimately it's being committed to God. I want to say two things too. Like John MacArthur said, and he's pretty hardcore. I wouldn't, he's not into the gifts and yeah. he's a Calvin, hardcore Calvinist. But he said that, I think it's called the Young Restless Calvinists. Mm, and they said reformed. that, uh, no, but the, the, this group is called the Young Restless Calvinists. And they, hmm. they smoke cigars, yeah. they make their own whiskey, they yeah. go to bars, and they talk theology. But he said, this is wrong. They do not believe that any church is good enough for yep. them. All they do is they go to um, they conferences. go to conferences, hear Paul Washer, hear John MacArthur, hear Wretched Radio, listen to stuff. And he says, that is wrong. Amen. And mm-hmm. so hear that. That's John MacArthur saying, and, and he has a TV presence everywhere, mm-hmm. so they could just watch. But he says, no, you need the local body. And hear this, I think, mm-hmm. back to what you said, Morgan. I think that once you're a mature Christian, I don't know when that is, but when you start mm-hmm. to become mature, you know Amen. the Bible, 
you shouldn't be going to the church so much to be fed, fed yeah. to be blessed. As Mariah said, you should be going to church to be Amen. a blessing, mm-hmm. right? It's better to give, Jesus said in Acts 20, than to get to receive. Amen. It's better. Remember even JFK said, John F. Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you, you can do for your country. Yeah. Yeah. And if you come, what is the Bible? What's our verse? We always quote Proverbs eleven twenty five. Those who refresh others, they themselves refresh. Mm-hmm. Who are the people that are usually the most sad are the most selfish. Yeah. Movie stars, rock stars, serve me, bless mm-hmm. me, 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 me. Mm-hmm. But those who give the love of God away to mm-hmm. Sunday school, yeah. to adult Sunday school, to just greeting people, loving people, praying after service, those are the people who are built up and mm-hmm. refreshed. Yeah. And you know, when someone says, I love one of the things people say, but I have to leave this church. I'm just not getting fed here. Okay, mm-hmm. well, excuse me. I know I'm not the best teacher, but I'm teaching the Word of God Amen. verse by That's verse. Good. Just reading the Word of God should feed you, Amen. right? Yeah. So I'm reading it and teaching it. So how can you say you're not getting fed? You might mm-hmm. say, I don't like Pastor Craig's teaching. Mm-hmm. But if I'm teaching the Word of God Amen. and I'm holding true to it, how can you not be fed? Amen. You might have said, see you know, so. early, I mean, later on yeah. is... You know, if you go to church just because their teaching is good yeah. and then you go to another one because you like their worship, you think you're getting the best of both worlds, mm-hmm. but really you're hurting yourself because you have no opportunity to serve, Amen. no opportunity to really be held accountable. Disciple. And so I'm kind of going ahead, but let's go to number 30. three. This one is uh, kind so, of touchy for people. <laughs> and it, yeah, it could seem I'll self-serving. I'm not, but a, I'm not, a, pastor. not a pastor. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You say okay. that. <laughs> uh, three says, God commands Christians to submit to church leaders. So Hebrews 13, 17 is one of my favorite verses. It says, obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls and they are accountable to God. Give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow. That would certainly not be of your benefit. Mm-hmm. Let me say something right there on that. I said this Sunday, you know, the most frustrating thing for me as a pastor is when someone comes for counseling or asks my opinion, and then I'll say, because usually biblical counsel, just to say this, is I li- I'm not a professional counselor, is to hear a problem and then see where that problem disagrees with the word of God. Mm-hmm. And then I speak the word of God to that problem. What does the Bible say? Amen. And I, this is what makes it not joyful for me when people say, I know that. <laughs> well, okay, well, wait a second. Knowing is not, Satan knows the word. Mm-hmm. Demons mm-hmm. tremble at God. But what's the difference between us and a demon, hopefully, and Satan is we are doers of the word. Amen. Amen. We might struggle. But our heart is committed to be obedient. As Jesus said, if you love me, obey. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but do not do what I say? So there's nothing more frustrating for a pastor when someone says, I know that, as if, well, oh, well you know that. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't know you know that. We can't just know the word. We've got to say, God, I'm committed by the power and strength of your spirit to live the word. And that's what makes it very sad as a pastor. As I always say, just like you said, right? If someone disagrees with me and says, Craig, I don't think that scripture you said was right. Here's why scripturally. I welcome that. But a lot of people say, I don't agree with that. And it's the word of God. How can you disagree with the word of God? You can't. Let God be true. You can say, I don't like it, maybe. You can say, I, I, that's hard to love my enemy. But at the end of the day, you got to say, let God be true and every man be a liar. And even though I don't like it, doesn't mean it's not true. It mm-hmm. just means I, my flesh fights the truth mm-hmm. and we have to humble ourselves. And that's what makes it, I believe, sad for God ultimately and for you because I love what one man of God said. You can, God gives you your free will. God lets you make your own choices, but your own choices can't determine your the outcome you want. Mm-hmm. You reject Jesus, you can do that, but you're going to hell because the Bible says he who has the son is life. He does not have a son. And we have to know that even though I go, I don't want to have to just choose the only way. Well, that's your prerogative. But if Jesus, as the word says, is the only way, then that's the only way to heaven. And Mm -hmm. something I would even say to church leaders is I would tell them a loving spur is to be able to correct. Because I think a lot of times the reason why you go to a church and you're like, I don't like this church because the pastor, he doesn't preach the word. Like he's not radical and he doesn't say the things yeah, because he's probably gotten so many people. I'm not justifying saying that's right and they're softer because, but they have so many people that roast pastor every time and they're, and they get so mad at him when he's just literally saying what the Bible says that homosexuals, fornicators, adulterers, swindlers, drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. And then they get mad at the pastor and yet he literally just read what the word of God said. And so I would just say this to encourage your pastor, like to not just, 
do it on a pastor's appreciation day, which no one even cares or <laughs> thinks even about care. nowadays. But like, to constantly thank your pastor, October, like, yeah, no one cares, <laughs> but it's sad. But to thank your pastor, to encourage them, because the rates of like suicide, the rates of wanting to quit and all that, it's it's crazy. Like how many pastors just are always constantly thinking like, hey, I should just give up. Because why? Because the enemy doesn't like their role and what they're doing. So he's going to do everything to tear down them and their family and their children. So you need to pray for your pastor. So we have that an intercessor prayer team where we pray for our pastor, where we pray for Morgan, Kevin, um, my dad, Pastor Craig. And so I would encourage you to pray for them and also to encourage them. So like if you were given a rhema word, something pierced your heart during the message, if um if they said something or did something like go up to them, even though it might be intimidating and encourage them, say, hey, I really liked even though that was intense and that like convicted me. Thank you, because that was from God. And and if anything, I think just even for the pastors to just be built up so they don't need those encouragement. Like my dad always says, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. God, you encourage me after that message I gave and mm. tell me how much you love me and you correct me. I don't want to hear from the people, but just from you, God. And so I would just say, encourage your spiritual leaders. Um, and, you know, if they if they say something to you that's hard, it might not feel good right at the moment, but know that in the end it produces a harvest of righteousness, that it's good. That's because they love you. And um, so, yeah, make it a joy for them, not sorrow, because like it says, it will not be a benefit to you. Mm -hmm. And because then what will happen? Then they'll probably stop talking to you. They'll probably start, stop disciplining you. And then that's not good for you. You need that correction, that accountability. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, just um, also, I think that a good thing with this whole thing with leadership is that leaders, a lot of times, um, they can constantly just be overwhelmed and discouraged. So that's why it's good to be serving in your body and be helping out and doing things and not just waiting for someone to come to you. Maybe if you're new to a church, say, hey, is there anything I can do? Like anything I can do to help serve? Um, what would you like me to do? Um, and that is such an encouragement and blessing to Yeah, leaders. And one more point on church attendance is if you're not coming to church, how are you going to know the leadership? Yeah. How are you going <laughs> to know the body of Christ? And if you don't know the body of Christ, then you're not going to be able to, um, yeah, like you said, intercede for them, pray for them. And also, like this verse says in Hebrews, we're not going to be able to submit to them because we're not even there, right? Mm. And so it's really important for us to make sure that we are, are knowing our pastor and our leaders. I understand some, some, some of you guys are at big churches where it's hard to get to the pastor or everyone's yeah. talking to the pastor, but know the other leaders, right? Yeah. And, and hopefully there's a discipleship thing, mm -hmm. you know, as to where mm -hmm. there's there's people that you can go to and that you can know and pray for. And hopefully you know your pastor's name. Sadly, we yeah. we talk to people and we're like, oh, so where are you going to church? And, oh, they're like, oh, we love it. We go to mm -hmm. that church. And then we're like, oh, yeah, who's the pastor there? Uh, and a lot of times, sadly, they don't even know their pastor's <laughs> name. Yeah. And I'm not saying that's a you have to. But if you don't know the pastor's name, then it doesn't even seem that you're really connected to that body because you know the people that you love the most, you hopefully know their names, right? Yeah. It, because you're close to them and you spend that time with them. So I love I love the story where you say that, Morgan, about this <laughs> pastor I was hearing where he, he had a big church in town and he was at a gas station <laughs> and he's witnessing this guy and, and this guy, he goes, hey, so do you know Jesus? He goes, oh yeah, I know Jesus. And he goes, really? So what church you go to? He goes, he says, the church... Well, it's his church. <laughs> and he goes, yeah. so do you know the pastor there? Really? He goes, oh, yeah, I know Pastor Ted. He's great. He's amazing. He goes, I'm Pastor that's, Ted. <laughs> and he's like, that's me. oh. <laughs> you know, so how do you know that would be such a burn yeah. if you all of a sudden are just talking away and saying, mm -hmm. I love Pastor Craig. And I'm like, I'm, I'm Pastor Craig. <laughs> that's me. Yeah, you look a lot skinnier in camera. <laughs> no, you know, it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's just so sad. But that is the modern day church. And that's why I don't know if people will like this, but I don't know. I love it. someone was saying about a leader that just fall had fallen, saying, I don't know if these mega churches or these yeah. mega Christian corporations are really God's ideal because yeah. mm -hmm. you know, what does the world say? Absolute power corrupts absolutely. When you get these eighty, you know, hundred million dollar budgets and crazy, I don't know mm -hmm. if it's it's conducive to really be. I, I I've really I mean, I've been in big churches. Mm -hmm. I was in the biggest church in this town in yeah. Tucson and but you know, when it says in Proverbs, I believe 30 verse nine, there's Solomon says, don't make me too rich that I say, 
who, you know, who is the Lord that uh, basically I don't need him or yeah. don't make me too poor that I steal. And sometimes we need to be careful because I know, you know, I was a drug dealer before Christ. I love money in my flesh. I think all of us love mm-hmm. money. Most of us love the power, love the stuff that money brings. So we need to say, God, you judge my heart because I don't know. And I just don't know because how can you be accountable in a church of 10,000 people? Mm -hmm. I think it's hard. I'm not saying you can't, Mm -hmm. but I think it's hard. And because we're so busy now, Mm -hmm. more than we've ever been, it's so easy to just, you know, Mm -hmm. in and out burger and not have accountability. I think if it's like a really big church, the only way that you can possibly do is discipleship groups and making that, making sure that it's not just the pastor you look to, that there's pastors under him and then there's, you know, kind of... You should know know a pastor in the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't know a pastor... Moses is, what was it? It Jethro. uh, Jethro, Mm -hmm. his father-in-law, was saying, Mm -hmm. yeah, he was saying, you you can't do all this on your own. Yeah, Yeah. we need help. You can't... One man can't manage thousands of people. It, it's yeah. gonna something's gonna fall through. And, and so. sadly, yeah. I was talking to a church where they said, like you could tell when people don't like our church, where they're mm-hmm. kind of trying to get out. Where everyone's going, "Hey, hey, thanks for coming." <laughs> then they're like running out, oh, <laughs> trying to get through, through the gauntlet. The gauntlet. Too friendly. But, but yeah, it's like. But one person told me they go, "I like this other church because nobody says hi to me. Yeah. I come yeah. in so. and I go out." And I'm like, that is just so weird. I mean, that's just, yeah. a, but that's, right. and that's sort of sadly, especially I think with COVID, the new normal. I don't want to shake anyone's hands. I don't want to hug anyone. I don't want to touch anyone. Our church, I'm always saying, be careful. Let's be wise. I mean, we're not going to be afraid of COVID, but let's not go crazy and kiss everyone and mm-hmm. hug everyone and shake everyone's hand. You know, I mean, Josh McDowell was on the show and he said 80% of all the flu is passed by handshakes. So he says, I quit hand- shaking hands 10 years ago. He's like 80 something. And he said, and I haven't had the flu since. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I mean, I don't, you know, you got to be careful. You want some, you know, because shaking hands yeah. is a way of saying, hey, how you doing? But yet, I, you know, fist pump or maybe an elbow, but just to use wisdom. But we need that connection where mm-hmm. I see our generation. I mean, I'm old. I'm 58. Mm-hmm. But you guys, it's like your generation seems like I, I, I don't need touch. I just got, I got my pastors online. I got my YouTube mm-hmm. channel. I don't need. I was just but talking to someone need. the other day who, you know, he's an older person. He, but he's introverted. And he was saying, you know, I know I'm supposed to go to church and it's so important. And not just going to church, but also, you know, that's a huge thing for people, which is good. But also talking to people yeah. and praying for people. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, naturally, that's not me. But he knows that it's that's important. what is good. Yeah. And But so naturally, me obeying himself. the word of God yeah. is not natural. Yeah. <laughs> and and right. he's always, so it doesn't he's always blessed when that right. happens, yeah. you know. And yeah. then even praying, you know, when we have prayer nights and mm-hmm. stuff, yeah. that's really good, too, to encourage the body and to be in unity. Yeah. 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 Do you yeah. want to do four? Yeah, let's go to four. So, kind of so this one kind of helps. Yeah. Um, so if you guys are like, oh, I can't submit to church leaders. Mm. Well, this is to hold them accountable. Amen. It says, God will hold church leaders accountable for the flock he has given them. So that's number four. And um, the question is, so how can church leaders be accountable? Who are they accountable to? Mm. So I'll give it to you guys. Who are they accountable to? God. Hint. Yeah, God. <laughs> God is because yeah. when you think about it, even when it talks about like leaders, it's like they if you cause one of these little ones to stumble, I believe it even means like spiritually, mm. not just little children. So yeah, if you cause these thing. these little ones to stumble, it's better Christian. for you for yeah. to tie a millstone around your neck and basically kill yourself. And so there's a lot of responsibility. You can't just flippantly because I see a lot of people are like, oh, I can't find a good church. So I'm going to start my own church. Didn't even, you know what I mean? Like, weren't even really called, but like, yeah. I'm, I could do it better. You know, I have yeah. money. I can someone, get support. I jokingly say, it's I've like, inspired more people to start churches yeah. in this town than any other pastor. I can brag about that. People say, if Craig can do it, I definitely can do it. Yeah. yeah. But there's so much pride. Like, yeah. maybe not starting a church, but a home group. And yeah. Like, they're saying, oh, that's my church. Because they think, oh, there's no perfect church, which, yeah, you're right. Yeah. There's, and, and even your home group is not going to be remember perfect. remember the saying, yeah. if you find a perfect church, you're don't go there because you're going to ruin you're it. You're going to mess it up. <laughs> That's true. true. So there is definitely no perfect. But, you know, and we mean, when we say that, there's no perfect church, meaning, I always say, it, it's not a matter of if I will ever hurt you. Yeah. It's just when. But hopefully the difference is that I hurt. If I hurt yeah. somebody, it's because I made a mistake. But it's not because I'm willfully disobeying yeah. the word of God, or I'm willfully ignorant of the word, or I, you know, like it says in Second Peter three, I'm not blatantly teaching heresy. Amen. Because Paul said we all know in, in part, part and process. So 
my doctrine isn't perfect. Yeah. I want it to be, I'm as Jesus says, be perfect as your heavenly father, be becoming perfect, the Greek means. But it's like, I know that humbly, but every day I should be growing and submitting more of my life and more obedient. But this church is not a perfect church because mm-hmm. I'm the pastor of it, right? Yeah. And Jesus is a perfect shepherd, but I'm not. No human leadership. And we see that. We see it's almost like I said Sunday about, you know, Ravi Zacharias falling. Mm-hmm. That's devastating to me. Yeah. We went and saw him right before he died. Yeah. It's just so hard to believe that it's like, I love what one atheist said. I don't love it, but mm-hmm. it's so true. He said, it's like these people preach of a Jesus so well, but they don't seem to really believe in the Jesus they preach. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm go- that's what hurts me is not because yeah. I couldn't do that, but because how can you do that how can you be teaching such a clear message and be sinning blatantly mm-hmm. against the God that you're going to stand before somebody? I mean, it's like, I guess that's the part is like, I guess the scripture, I'd say the fear of God is not in them. Because yeah. if you feared God, you'd go, okay, it doesn't matter what Morgan thinks of me or Mariah thinks or what the congregation, it matters what God thinks. Yeah. God's watching. I love the verse that I live by. One of the verses is Hebrews 4.13, and I'm paraphrasing it, but it says, uh, the eyes of the Lord, everything is laid bare before the eyes of the Lord to whom we must give an account. If mm-hmm. we believe that God's watching, yeah. I always love that song mm-hmm. from the eighties. I always feel that <laughs> somebody's watching me and I got no privacy. That's the truth. God is always watching. Amen. So live. And we have cameras around our church mm-hmm. against any, uh, you know, pedophiles or anything weird. We have yeah. cameras and I love it. People yeah. say, this is weird. I love it because it reminds me that God is always watching mm-hmm. and we should always be living right. We shouldn't be picking our nose in the middle of the church because right? yeah. there's yeah. a camera watching that. <laughs> and so. make sure that you are um, also not just putting all of your hope in a person, in a yeah. pastor, because if, like example, if someone put all their hope in like a Carl Lentz or whatever his name is, Carl Lentz or something, then of course they're going to fall because that was really that was that was scary what happened what he did but that's the point is we're not putting our hope in a pastor where we know that they're human they're fickle yes should they be um more you know accountable Mm -hmm. and more right like get right with god yeah i believe that but so many times i think that we put them like on this pedestal like they're this like superstar Mm -hmm. and that they can do no wrong where that I'm not justifying what he did because that was, you know, extreme and that was, you know, intense and scary. But like, I just think that like, if your pastor admits like, Hey, I struggle with anger. You shouldn't be like, Oh, I'm not going to listen to anything you say now because you struggle with anger. Like you can be honest and real. What and are you talking about, Mariah? Yeah. You <laughs> be becoming perfect. And then also pastors, um, need to remember that, like it says in Acts, uh, 2028 20, so guard yourself and god's people feed and shepherd god's flock his church purchase with his own blood over which the holy spirit has appointed you as leaders mm-hmm. so remember that too don't just um try to just be a pastor or a leader if god didn't anoint you or like call you to do which that the holy and spirit appointed you. exactly mm-hmm. and then a lot of times too i think that um if this is another thing that goes with I mean, kind of is a little off, but make sure if you see a problem and there is something, a lot of times people just get mad because I feel like this is wrong or I didn't like how you said this or you said that in this tone or whatever. It's all feelings based, but they can't ever give a scripture of why, hey, you said this, but this is unbiblical because this is what the Bible says. So many times it's, well, I don't feel like you should have said that or that just wasn't really kind or I didn't like that you guys didn't, you used to do this event and now you don't do that. Like it's all feelings based and it's not based off what the Bible says. And so I encourage you if there is something that your pastor is doing or the leadership that is doing something unbiblical to go with them with the verse, find that scripture and go to them with that scripture. And that's something that we really haven't ever had anyone do come and do to us mm-hmm. and we would it's not like oh praise god no one sent to us because they, they're not in their bible and they don't know it's because we welcome that we literally say can you give us a verse like can you find a scripture or something anything like any verse to like even that kind of you might not think it goes with it but it might even seem like it will can you give us that and it's usually no 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 i, I just think that you should listen to me because i have feelings and it's like we will but if it's not in the word of god you know we can't, we have to go, Morgan always says, faith, fact, and feelings is mm. the caboose It's at the end. But mm. yeah. So I want to say this. I like where I said this. I wrote this. I really liked it. No, okay. <laughs> but I, I like this is that, that, um, you know, you got to be accountable 
that it, it's like I can't hold everyone accountable Mm-mm. in our church, even our size church. We have about probably everyone shows 150 people. And, uh, but I couldn't hold them accountable, but it was something. So what's sad is, like I said, if you hold certain people accountable, they go, yeah, I mean, you're not my pastor, right? Yeah. One person, <laughs> uh, this is, this is my it's secondary my church. church. This is not really anything. That's kind of hurtful. That'd be like, like if you kind of fight with your spouse, you go, you're really not my first love. I mean, you're my mm. second choice. I was really, Ted is what I really hoping for. I'm hoping we get a divorce and I'll be, it's like, what? <laughs> so we need, there's so much encouragement. We talked to someone just the other day who was saying, Hey, this is my church. Mm-hmm. If you see anything wrong in my life, yeah. please show me. I welcome it. I mean, I almost overwhelms me. Like you trust it's responsibility. Said, yeah. You trust God to speak through me that much. Mm. Oh my goodness. It almost freaks me out mm. in a good way, but Amen. just that respect. It's like, and it kind of sobers me to go, I better be right with God. Yeah. Cause, cause I know God loves this life. He yes. loves all life. But if I misdirect them in Jesus' name, and that's what I was saying on the way here, so much of what we do is not Jesus. It's me yeah. mm-hmm. saying, if I was Jesus of the forest. You know, <laughs> that basically, if, you know, that's from the Wizard of Oz. If I was king of the forest, like this is what I would do. And I always mm-hmm. jokingly say, I want that wristband instead of what would Jesus do? I want a wristband that says, what would Craig do? Do the opposite. And usually do the opposite and I'll be right, right? Because Craig's selfish. Craig's mm-hmm. about me. Craig says, everyone like me. Everyone agree with me. And we have to say, okay, what mm-hmm. does God want? And God cares. And God is, I can't even imagine some pastors, what they've done in the name of Jesus, mm-hmm. especially when you hear about these pastors manipulating their position. Yeah. To molest kids mm-hmm. or to manipulate women. Yeah. Wow. I mean, trust me, I was a womanizer. I'm very ashamed of the things I did before Christ, but I couldn't imagine in the name of Jesus using that position, that high position, to manipulate people that would trust me. That, mm. That's a new kind of sin Basically, that I hope I never God know. If you didn't and never, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, and it's like, you know, and I don't. I want to be careful. Whatever yeah. man thinks he's strong, let him take heed lest he fall. But you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like the fear of God is not in them. And it's like that atheist said about the one leader. It's like they didn't really believe in the God they preached. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh God, help us that we would really believe in the God we preach, and that He's going to hold us accountable. And there's a yeah. special judgment, especially for those who teach oh, the yeah. Word of God. Let there be few teachers. It says in James. Right, so we encourage stricter judgment. So that should sober. It's not just, oh yeah, I want to be a pastor. I want to be a church. I love. I'll end with this on this point. Do you remember? Remember uh, Gladiator? Mm. When remember when when uh, Caesar said, "You must be Caesar to to what's a Gladiator?" And he goes, mm. "No, with all my heart, no, sir." And he goes, "That's why you must be." Mm-hmm. And usually, what I've seen in my thirty nine years of ministry. Those who really want to be a pastor and say, I'm a pastor. I'm called to be a pastor. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, they're not. Yeah. It's usually people that are called to be a pastor. They're like, I'm not really sure. I don't know. I mean, I would like to be, but I don't know. That's a yeah. lot of pressure. I was, I told you kind of in a way, it's too long to go into, but I was sort of tricked in being a senior pastor because I was like, I'm weird enough. I don't want to be a senior because they get weird and I don't need to be any weirder. And, you know, and so mm. I think sort of, it's like if, you, if you're just like, oh, yeah, this is easy. Anyone could do it. Right there, that probably shows me you don't really understand Mm -hmm. the the responsibility Mm -hmm. or the weight of being a pastor because it should put a holy fear in you of, oh, my goodness, this is, I am representing God. I mean, we're all supposed to be ambassadors, but as a pastor, even though you said we shouldn't put a pastor on a pedestal, but people do. But they do. But you better, by the grace and strength of God, do your best to always point people to Jesus and be pointing them to the right Jesus because... We're going to be accountable for what we led people to. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. Number five says true believers are a part of a local church body, not loco, <laughs> local, <laughs> right? Not Sometimes crazy, but crazy. true believers are a part of a local church body. And uh, I want to read First Corinthians twelve uh, eighteen uh, through twenty one. But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where He wants it. How strange a body would be if it only had one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you, right? And uh, some sometimes people are like, hey, you know, why can't we go to other churches? You know, it's all it's all the body of Christ, the right? Universal. The universal yeah. church. But which, you know, it does, a, which it does Ephesians. talk about in yeah. Ephesians 1 and 3, I think. Yeah. 1 and 4. 1 and 4. Yeah, nice. it does talk Ooh, about that. It's right on the paper you wrote. 
Oh, nice. <laughs> he wrote it. Oh, right. yeah, there it is. Right there. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Nothing special. Yeah, I don't read fire. everything I say. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, but here you see that it's not talking about the head as Christ in this in yeah. this instance, in this right? In this context. Yeah. Yeah. It says the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. Um, because we know Christ wouldn't say, oh, I don't, you know, he mm-hmm. wouldn't be like us, right? So right here, it's different. It's it's in verse 21, it's different. And it's not saying, um, yeah, so it's not talking about, so that's why people kind of get confused. They're like, why can't I go to every church, right? And you can in the sense that it's not like you can't attend another church, like Pastor Craig said. It's not like you can't go see another speaker mm-hmm. or go to an event or anything like that. But what we have noticed is people, we're, we're more addressing people just jumping around yep. because they don't want accountability and they don't want to be committed. And we see a lot of that, I think, with social media. And you see a lot of people aren't getting married nowadays. There's a lot yeah. of lack of commitment. And mm-hmm. so, yeah. What do you guys have to say about about that and the universal church and stuff like that? What I just should say, I'm sure glad that my, you know, sometimes I know it's hard to believe with my body, but <laughs> sometimes I don't always eat like I should. And I'm sure glad my heart doesn't go, you know, and I'm out of here. You are <laughs> clogging me up, dude. I'm gone. You know what I mean? So it's, aren't you glad that your body parts don't just <laughs> ditch you, you know, or yeah. if you're like Morgan, you're working out too hard and your bicep says that's too much. You're straining <laughs> me too much. I'm out of here. I mean, we need each other, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and we like, like you said, we want to be, especially I believe in the last days, we're so independent. I don't need anybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you do. Because what? Suicide is through the roof, right? Yeah. Everyone's staying at home. Yeah, they're watching eight hours of Netflix, you know, and I always, don't you guys, I feel great when I so, binge watch eight hours a day. I don't want to put, I want to, I want to like run in front of traffic, okay? So it's like, we need each other. We need, and I don't know about you, can we agree on this one thing? The most fruitful thing of Christianity, besides having great quiet time, is being used by God to bless someone else. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you share Christ with someone or you pray for someone, like the, like Sunday, someone said, "My goodness, what you you." Someone said this, and this is crazy. It's going to seem self serving, but they go, "Craig, you actually were almost humble this Sunday." Yeah. It was amazing. No, but you know, three people said that you were humble. Well, I've gone through a pretty hard week yeah. and through a couple of hard weeks, but I'm like, you know, I don't like it. I don't like the pain. But if it causes humility in me where people see mm-hmm. Jesus a little more, Amen. that's awesome. But you know what I mean? It's like, but it's like we need to just get mm-hmm. to where we're just. I think we, we, iron sharpens yeah. iron, you know? Like, we need each other. We yeah. need that. But it's like, I love what I'm saying. Suicide, yeah, like I love when, when, when I see Christ working through me. Amen. And I mean, and I hope you hear that. That isn't because of my intellect or my incredible wisdom. But when I hear when someone said, my goodness, Craig, I don't know what you were saying. But while you were speaking, God spoke to me. That is the biggest privilege. That is the most awesome thing in the world is when you realize you truly are a vessel Mm -hmm. or a body part of God. And he, you know, like that song, hands and feet, where his hands, his feet, Mm -hmm. his mouth. That's when it's so awesome. Mm -hmm. But when it's like just all about me, feed me, bless me edify me i don't know if you're worthy to be in my inner circle mm-hmm. and and like i jokingly said and I, I don't know if this will relate but you know what i realize i don't know about you but a lot of me i want to be around the charlie kirks i want to be around the stephen bancars i want to be around all the cool people mm-hmm. but you know what who did jesus hang out with he mm-hmm. could have hung out with all the cool people but he hung out with the common people and I remember I was, at this big, I was at this big church and people called me jokingly kind of to degrade me they called me the king of the losers yep and I said that. I remember one person in our church goes, yeah, man. You know, and he was one of the people I hung out with. But you know what? That's who Jesus loves. Is he says, as you've done in the least of these, Amen. my brother, you've done unto me. Yeah. yeah. And so who are we? And that. if you realize it, we're all losers. Yes. We might not think we're as bad as that person. But to a holy God, we could all be losers. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. But yet he loves us. And he died for us. And we should care and love others. And when I love the least, that's when I feel the love of God smiling through me. And Amen. feel him saying, uh, that's that's yeah. son i'm proud of you mm-hmm. you know that's the heart we need to have and we can't do that disconnected from the body and like you said one body because we can't we can't chop hop three churches or four churches in this city or our city and expect people to trust us if they don't see you but once every three yeah. months and another hard thing is you. like i know mm-hmm. that there's people who are like but there is one church so i am accountable and i just go to a different things for fellowship and stuff 
But a lot, <laughs> yeah. But a lot of times you need to really care about those those churches that you're jumping to. Am I being a distraction? Am I um, am I kind of just w- taking their time and sucking their time because I need more friends or I need fellowship? Mm-hmm. And there's no way I'd ever disciple anyone there. There's no way I'd ever like really be invested or serve there. That's Wrong. That's wrong because <laughs> you're you're taking right, and that's great. I I hope you have a church that you are fully giving your full ten percent, your full tithe to that church. You're fully invested, but I Good feel time. like if you truly yeah. were invested to one church, I don't personally. Maybe this is me being in ministry. I don't know how you would have time to go to all to different churches and just seeking out maybe a few times right every once in a while if there's things, but where it's like like that that is where you need to check yourself mm-hmm. and also maybe ask the leadership i think the best thing to do is if you're really you're you're taking a lot of time with these people you're spending time with a lot of the people in the leadership and they're welcoming you maybe ask them hey are you okay with this is this okay um mm-hmm. am i being a distraction and just be humble about that and then see what they say and, and don't get mad and upset if they say something and be like I have my church. Praise God. I have my church that I can be um, really invested in. It does like, with other like people. Like baby Christians. I see they're like, oh, so I can hop around. And then it's they true. do that and then they're gone and they're like, oh, I like this. Like I don't have to be held accountable. Yeah. yeah. Now I can kind of live how I used Bad to example. before Christ. All right. So number six, we find true meaning only in community. Amen. And this is kind of, I think this is the part where we were talking about how, um, you know, just being there's no community when you're just jumping around like yeah. if just think about that it's hard enough like think about if you have <laughs> 12 different families it's hard just to try to split time between two or three families you know that's hard right and so you we need to make sure that we are a part of the body of christ like i said earlier that we're not just going for one because we think hey the message is really good here but I don't really like the worship here, so I go to this church for the worship, hmm. or I go to this church because you know my girlfriend's there or something. Mm. No, and that's another point that yeah. I believe that when you are pursuing someone or when you guys are in a relationship, that you guys should be going to the same church. Amen. But that's another thing. Well, so, let's say I mean, but we yeah. have a guy who's a pastor who said it's all right to go. Your, your spouse can go to one church. You're, you can go to another church, and I mean that's, that's because they only believe in the universal. So that's, that's ridiculous, so but I mean, but yet they say there's no real good church. But my point mm-hmm. is that really I see too, because unequally yoked does not mean. I think we we don't want to go too long on this, but we got to drag this out. We need some shows, <laughs> okay? But is it's just gonna that, be one part? Is the the problem is is that when you have um you unequally yoked doesn't just mean are they saved Yeah. because unequally yoked are you going in the same direction that's what yeah. it means if you have one oxen going this way a young ox says hey there's a hot looking girl I want to go over there an older ox is going straight you're going to be pulling against each mm-hmm. other that's what it means kind of like having a car with the one tire going this way the other one and it's just going down mm-hmm. the road crazy well you got to make sure you're not just if you're especially yeah. if you want ministries Mariah knows and Morgan you got to have a spouse that wants ministry Amen. because mm-hmm. that's a real that's a whole nother level because you're going to have to really live a sacrificial life yeah. and not all be about family. I mean, we love family, right? But we don't spend as much time as some people do mm-hmm. because we're busy with the family of God. And so you have to find that equal mm-hmm. yoke with your spouse. So you, you know what I mean? So it's hard when someone goes to a church over here and then this church is sort of maybe emphasizing this. And then they go, whoa, I'm not into discipleship. I'm just into big conferences. It's mm-hmm. going to be a difference. Does that make sense? And mm-hmm. so we need to make sure that we're kind of on the same team, the same paradigm, same yeah. mission. how you view, you know, what glasses you look some through. some people can believe that the gifts are today and some yeah. people don't think. And they think, oh, I can still be married because you're still Christians. Yeah. But that shouldn't be something that you're constantly arguing about. Like Satan is already going to attack you. You don't need to be arguing about another thing. Like there, you're already going to be arguing about stupid things. So it's like that is just life. But, but like Amos three, three says, how can two walk together unless to be agreed? Now we always say agree on the essentials, agree to disagree on the non-essentials. Like I can fellowship with someone who I don't agree with women pastors, but I can fellowship with someone who believes in it. Uh, I don't believe that we're going to go through the tribulation, but I can hang out with people that believe they're going. I say, hey, if you really want to go through it, maybe God will let you. But mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But if someone says, I believe Jesus is a way, there's many ways to God, then I can't hang with yeah. that person. I, I have yeah. to say, I don't consider you a brother or sister yeah. in Christ because that is 
that is an essential, right? I always love what one pastor said. You can agree on a, you can disagree on a lot of things, but you can't get the deity of Christ wrong. Because so. that's a cult. Yeah, and one man said that you can't truly serve Christ without serving the body of Christ, you know? Amen. And people might think that's blasphemous. They're like, no, but I, I've been doing it, you know? Mm. But no, it, God, I don't believe As you do doing the least, as you're doing to me. Yeah, and I don't believe God has designed us to be just free-floating Christians, no. just all separate. He's designed us to be unified and to have a church that we can actually serve at to serve. Because... You know, like we were talking about depression. So many people are depressed because they're living for themselves. They're not serving. If you just continue to take, 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 you're going to be depressed. You're going to be saddened because your purpose is yourself. And that's a pretty small purpose. But when we serve others, we are joining in the purpose of God. And and he tells us to do that. So that is the will of God. So it's much bigger than just us. And uh, yeah, let's go seven since we're running out of time and we don't want to like make it too funny. long for you guys. So the last one is FOMO, <laughs> the <laughs> fear of missing out. So what is that? I remember I remember when I was a youth pastor, I was um, learning about all these different things and I heard about FOMO and I was like, wow, so many kids struggle with the fear of missing out. Yeah. I've heard <laughs> stories of kids uh, fearing missing out so much that they wouldn't leave their friends. And this one girl, she just peed her pants because she, she <laughs> didn't, she didn't even want to take the time to go to the bathroom because of the fear of missing out. That was my Latin teacher told me that. When that's she was how a much kid. I love my family. I but, just pee my pants because yeah. I don't want to leave them. <laughs> but that's sadly, it's not just kids. I mean, now that's almost everyone, right? The fear of missing out. So uh, I think, and that's, I kind of jumped ahead. I said this earlier, but I said this twice already. So sorry for the repetition, but it's, we need that, right? Amen. So we need to see that you're not supposed to just go to, to one church for a certain aspect mm-hmm. and then this church for another aspect that you like, but you should be going to the church that God has called Holy you to. Now, even if the worship might seem kind of weak to you, you know, mm-hmm. but if God's called you there, go there, right? And Can I, can I say something on that? Yeah. Okay. And it's really amazing, too. Like we were talking, I think, earlier about hearing the voice of God, mm-hmm. really listening to God. But how many people, without being too self-serving, have said to you, Mariah and Morgan, I feel God called me to this church, mm-hmm. and yet they didn't yeah. come for months or maybe ever. Yeah. And why is it? Because it's a smaller church, because we don't have the biggest coffee bar, because we don't have the sexiest dudes. I mean, we have David Catalano, but no. not all the... No, I'm <laughs> joking. But we don't have all the, we don't have all the amenities... Hmm. But isn't it wild? And what does it say in the Bible? His ways are not our ways. Yeah. What we value is being great, the biggest church, the coolest coffee bar, the coolest speakers, new speakers, bands, all these conferences. God says, no, that's really not what I'm always into. No. But you, so it's so important to hear the voice of God mm-hmm. because God a lot of times will take his place as we don't want to go. Yeah. That's why, again, my wrist thing, what would Craig do? I almost do the opposite. I would go to the biggest, coolest church right the youngest hippest pastor the carl lentz because that looks cool yeah but god's not into cool Mm -mm. he's into righteousness like i said if we saw apostle paul none of us would want to follow apostle paul Mm -mm. Mm because he would be hooked bow-legged hooked nose (laughs) bald punched over probably from his back being beaten scarred right rocks in his i mean just he would he would not be on tbn that's for sure (laughs) But yet here is this man was used by God to write uh, half of the New Testament almost. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. So truly God's ways are not our ways. What he values is not what we value. What mm-hmm. he calls awesome, we call ugh, weak and ugly. And we need to say sometimes we need to go. So my point I'm trying to make is so many times people have said, go here. And people go, oh, I don't want to do that. And then they eventually we had one person did go, said, hey, and now they're blessed. Right, mm-hmm. and they said the very thing you said. They said, "I can't wait to when I have a boyfriend and Pastor Craig can beat the tar out of him." No, okay, yeah. no, but I mean, can hold him <laughs> accountable. Them. He said that I would love yeah. that to bring. Now I'm thinking that again freaked me out. I'm like, what person must be like, stay away from my boyfriend? Don't mess him up. You know, yeah. don't make him ha- hate us. 
But you know, but that's the way it should be. Mm-hmm. We should have. We should want to our father and mother respect our our boyfriend or yeah. girlfriend or our future, whatever you call it, courting person. That they say, no, I I see the Lord in them. But if right, like we always say, in the midst of in a multitude of counselors, there's wisdom. If ever, if you like somebody and everyone in your family and your friends say, I don't see what I don't see what you see, then we need to go. Hmm, maybe I need to rethink mm-hmm. it again. That's why we need the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. We need fellowship so that. We aren't just moved by emotion or looks, but we are looking where other people can be more objective, see the whole package and say, yeah, but this person's a selfish Mm -hmm. pig. They might say Jesus, but they're not really living for Jesus. We need the body of Christ. And to spin it back, we do need to go where God's calling us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And, and, you know, hey, and we're not saying this just to say come here because a lot of people are called somewhere else. But, if you he- are called here and you go, but it's not sexy enough, then come make it sexy. Yeah. Come, <laughs> come, come. You be the thing, right? Everyone says, what are you going to, like the Janet Jackson song, what have you done for me lately? Dun, dun, dun. Mm-hmm. Okay, but maybe you're the missing link to help so make sexy. this church a lot better church, right? Mm-hmm. But if everyone waited till it's perfect, when is it going to be perfect? You're, you know, it's like like JFK, ask not what this church can do for you, but what you can do for this church. And as I said once in a sermon, if everyone came to church to be a blessing, how awesome would church be? Mm-hmm. If you just said, I just want to be used by God to bless somebody, to yeah. encourage my pastor, to encourage the worship leader, to encourage the people in the congregation, to pray with them, to give them a word, Lord, a scripture, pray with them if they're sick, whatever. If everyone said, I'm going to give, that would be so awesome. As yeah. I jokingly say, when we first started this church 19 years ago, is it 19 now? Yeah. 19 years ago. It's January, first Sunday of January. This one guy, our church was two weeks old, and he goes, this church isn't very friendly. No one said hi to me. And I go, dude, everyone, he goes, he goes, I'm new here. No one said hi to me. I go, everyone's new here. This church is two weeks old. But you know, there's the wrong attitude, though. Say hi to me. What does the Bible say in the old King James? The friendly have friends. Be what you want. You want friends? Be friendly. You want love? show love. You want grace? Show grace. You want mercy? Show mercy. You want someone to pray for healing for you? You pray for healing for someone else. And what you sow, you will reap. Amen. And we need to know that. Well, yeah. I think it's your, if you believe that you can go to all these churches and you're getting the best of both worlds or every world, <laughs> you know, there's multiple churches and stuff. But just think about that in your life. If you are a guy and you just continue to sleep around or you just continue to mm. just go after all these women yeah, you might have fun in the world's eyes or you might have fun for a moment, but ultimately it's going to destroy you. But what I'm trying to get at is that you never really get the blessing of true commitment. Amen. So you're always going to think that you're not going to be able to trust people. You're going to just realize that it's just going to be so surface level. Just, mm-hmm. And so we need to make sure that we... Just like a marriage, there's yep. in, in true commitment when two people are committed to one another and it's a husband and a wife, not a husband and a husband, right? Not a woman and a woman. But when they're truly committed to each other, there's such blessing that mm-hmm. is almost inexplainable sometimes. Yeah. Like you can't even, it just goes beyond what you thought in the beginning. Because when you're young, you think, oh, wh- why would I want to be stuck with someone and I can't, I can't go and talk with other people and stuff. Uh, that, and I'm not saying you can't talk with other people, but you know, flirt and mm-hmm. stuff. You think, you think, oh, that's so limited. That's so restrictive. Yeah, it's restrictive. But there's so much blessing, and there's that intimacy that you were mm-hmm. talking about, Dad. That there's, there's a intimacy not just with the church body, but I think it also draws you closer to the Lord, yeah. and you mm-hmm. understand how much he loves his church and you understand relationships in a different way. Yeah. And And, it's helping like train you too for if you are single and you're FOMO and that's why you're going to all these churches instead of just praying, right. And saying, God, where do you want me to be like the church you want me to commit it at? And then you find that church and then you pray in that person. Like you pray, even Mm -hmm. if you're a guy, because like for girls, maybe it's easier because, Oh God, bring him. And but like, actually, I feel like it's technically easier for guys because if they come, they would stay there. But anyway, hmm. I think that whatever it is, that's the whole point is like that verse Proverbs twenty nine twenty five: the fear of man or the fear 
in doing stuff in your own strength, right? Because you're you're thinking on how men think of things and worldly passions and desires and ways. The fear of man will prove to be a trap or a snare, right? Because you're like, where do I go? Do I go here? Uh, no one really, I never feel really connected. I don't really feel loved will prove to be a trap. But he who trusts in the Lord, like hears his voice, obeys it, stays where God calls them to, isn't hasty and always jumping here and there because they're offended, right? Or they're upset, but truly just be still and know and see and trust that God will do a work in your life as you are constantly waiting on him. And also Mm -hmm. to not get your fulfillment in church or in people because it's not about that. Like it really is, you're supposed to go to church for the accountability, for that fellowship, that koinonia, that intimacy with other brothers and sisters in Christ spiritually and discipleship. But you're supposed to really be worshiping God on your own time. You're supposed to be worshiping God in your when you're at home. You're supposed to be in your prayer closet praying. You should be in your word. Because so many times people go to church to be fed, and then if they didn't fully get fed, they blame it on the church where if they were getting filled throughout the week, like my dad said, and then they can come and be a blessing, mm-hmm. then it's so much different because you're not as easily offended. Their gifts that yeah. God has given and that's them, another, you know, I think, healing. good yeah, topic yeah, later can, down the road. Yeah, encouragement. Gifts. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of took it a different way so you guys can continue. FOMO. But that was, do you have anything else about FOMO and fear of missing out? Yeah, I was. Well, I really like what you were saying, Morgan, about um, about intimacy because, mm-hmm. you know, I was that guy before Christ. I know mm-hmm. it's hard to believe, but I was the womanizer. I was the guy mm-hmm. who was playing around, and and I remember, like you were saying, it was like I felt like a dog. Yeah. I literally felt just like instinctually like our puppy you knows already <laughs> being a puppy six you know, weeks. You know, already, <laughs> yeah, but it's like, um, you know, I just felt like a dog, and mm-hmm. I didn't. And I remember here I was quote, making love with a lot of people, but I wasn't really empty. in love. So and I was empty. so empty and it made me more lonely. Yeah. It made me more, and also the guilt, because mm-hmm. I knew these girls didn't love me and I knew I didn't love them. And it, it's like, there's an old Bob Seger song. Mm-hmm. He used her, she used him, neither one cared. They were getting their share. But like you said, I really wasn't getting my share. I was, I was the more I did that, the more empty mm-hmm. I felt. So you know it's a it's a lie. It's a lie of the devil, right? And mm-hmm. then you just get weirder and weirder and do more sexually immoral stuff. And that's why we see such weirdness now. Child child trafficking, people messing around. A guy I just read raped a three year old. I mean, you know, just crazy stuff because mm-hmm. lust is never satisfied. But what's really cool is what you were saying, back to God. The marriage bed is blessed. Amen. Mm-hmm. It's not just sex. It's just it's blessed because there's a commitment, the favor of God's on it. It's not dirty, right? Mm-hmm. It's commitment. It's love. It's like God. God doesn't love us. He's not like you know a lot of other religions. Well, if you do this, 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 I might love you. It's that while we were yet sinners, God died for us. He loved us even when we weren't lovable. Yeah. Most of the time, even as Christians, we're not lovable. But even when we weren't lovable, He loved us. And now, why do we love Him? Because do we got to do this, this, this? No, because He loved us when we weren't lovable and now we out of love we're overwhelmed to say how can i not love a god who's so gracious and loving to me so anyways mm-hmm. i just uh i think commitment is god's thing yeah. right? you, you know can't you know you can't you j- god so loved so the world much. that he gave his son he didn't go i don't know you know i mean you guys are a bunch of flakes i mean i don't know if i die for you i might i don't know i don't know you know he proved his commitment by giving his very best his son mm-hmm. and that right there. Well, that's why he explained it as a marriage because mm-hmm. nowadays marriage is so like flippantly like treated as you can leave them, you can divorce them, which God hates divorce. And that's the point is like he hates it when Satan or your flesh gets offended and rips you away from a church because it's like a tree. Like there was this tree that someone had in the front yard and then they moved it to the backyard and it didn't grow fruit for like a really long time. So if you're constantly jumping Great from church to church to church, mm-hmm. you can never really get involved in stuff because you're always looking for the door out because yeah. this person offended you or that. But that's what I always pray for, like that we will have um, tough skin so people don't easily offend us and a soft heart where we're going to love people, we're going to pour into people and hold each other accountable. So the last verse I want to share, mm-hmm. and this is important with accountability and this is important for young people because a lot of times I believe people don't want to get involved in church because they're scared someone's going to find out how who I really am. And they don't, They it's like they want people to know who they are, but they're afraid because if you, fi- if you finally figure out who I am, you won't love me. But know that God loves you. He cares about you. He mm-hmm. cast your sin from as far as the east is from the west and the sea of forgetfulness like he doesn't remember your sin i know people do and that's why you're afraid 
but know that if you confess your sin right to God and then God tells you hey I want you to share this to someone else to get accountability right that's why people don't like being committed because they're afraid of rejection know that like basically nine times out of ten or ten times out of ten they too have or are struggling with something so they they should have compassion but anyway James five sixteen. therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed the effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much so understand that confessing your sin to God is so important but if you still feel weighed down and oppressed and discouraged and you need help like there's a certain sin in your life that you're like constantly give it to God and I'm like oh I'm gonna stop it that's what it means to be committed. That's what it means for a true discipleship and fellowship, koinonia, to be able to share one another's burdens, to say, hey, I'm struggling with this. Can you please hold me accountable with this? It's not going to be easy. It's going to be uncomfortable. You might have counselor's remorse and say, oh, now I feel bad. But know that that accountability is so good. It might not feel good at times, but know that in the end, it brings you to being right standing with God. It sanctifies you. It helps you be holy so that one day you can see the Lord. So anyway. I want to say something on that back to the Carl Lentz thing Mm -hmm. is this wild is how we, I love what one pastor said. He said, if you knew the sin in my life, Mm. you wouldn't listen to me. But if I knew the sin in your life, I wouldn't talk to you. So that's the thing. And I'm not saying it, we could take it as, oh, so we're all sitting and blatantly. No, Mm -mm. we're all struggling. But the bottom line is that we should be honest. We should say, hey, I'm struggling. I struggle when Mara was joking about anger. I struggle with anger. Mm-hmm. I know it's hard to believe. A man is a man <laughs> of God, but I do. I struggle with it. I'm not proud of it, but I struggle with it. And so that's why I went, Mara, what are you talking about? But it's <laughs> like we have to be honest because yeah. confess your sins. Be humble because humble. I think why we have Carl Lentz's because we want, there's something in us that is idolatrous, that wants someone to be a hero besides yeah. Jesus. And the only hero we should have as a Christian isn't our spouse, isn't our pastor. We should respect them. But it isn't that it's Jesus because he's the only one that will not let us down. Mm -hmm. But every human, no matter how sincere they are, are going to let you down sometime. And we need to know that. And we need to put our hope in God, right? If I put my hope in Ravi Zacharias, I'm overwhelmed. I want to say, you know, I don't know. I don't even know if I want to be a pastor. I'm so ashamed. But if I say, hey, Jesus is always faithful and I want to be like Jesus, then I can be humble. And so that's the key. And and I think, you know, when I was talking about like the Google Dolls, I don't want I want don't want the world to see me because I don't think that they'll understand when everything's made to be broken. I just want you to know who I am. And there's that dichotomy. I want to be known, but I'm afraid of being known. But if I'm not known, I'll be empty. But if I'm known, you won't like me. It's because but it we, takes a risk. Yeah. yeah. And we have to do that because guess what? And here's the thing. Faith. That person you're thinking is awesome is a sinner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not maybe. It's just how bad and how long. Mm-hmm. And here's the only problem. This is all I would say. Wouldn't you uh, you guys agree? It's just when you don't admit it. I love what one man of God said. All God asks you to do is admit it and then ask him to help you quit it. That's it. Mm-hmm. It's not like, I have no sin. What are you talking about, Morgan? Mm-hmm. That's not the answer. No. The answer is to admit, no, I have sin. I remember telling my, the guy who led me to the Lord, Dan Hicks, oh, man, dude, you have no sin. Look at you. You're amazing. He goes, if you knew, he goes, trust me, I have attitudes that you wouldn't like. I have, you know, I'm prideful. And now I realize he's a big sin. No, okay. But I mean, <laughs> it's like you realize that. And so my point is, is just stop all this trying to put on facade. Yeah. Let's be real. Amen. Let's quit. And that's the one thing about this. I love, you know, it's so neat that, right, YouTube, because it's so cool. But a lot of people on YouTube, all they are is a lot of show and not very much go, right? They're just, they're like, they're like keyboard warriors living in their mom's basement. But guess what? You need to be a real man or woman of God. And the way you become that, is by being around people, they're gonna iron sharpens iron, they're gonna spur you on, yeah. and they're gonna really hold you not just to know the truth, but they're gonna love to and they encourage it. you to live the truth. And that's Amen. only lived out. That's like saying, Well, I have a gym membership. Well, do you go? No, but I have a gym membership, so I'm in shape. No, you're only in shape if you practice Amen. pumping yeah. some iron, right? And it's the same way. You're only a real healthy Christian if you're around the body of Christ that's going to say, Hey, well, what are you doing there? You know, or hey, you should do this. Oh, we need each other. But we need to, and we need to quit making the facade that I'm all that in a box of chocolates because you're not. 
The only one who is, is Jesus. But hopefully our goal is all to be more like Christ today than we were yesterday. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So Amen. your homework. Mic drop. <laughs> your homework <laughs> is to pray and ask the Holy Spirit if you aren't involved in a church or you don't have a church that you're committed to, to pray and ask the Holy Spirit, guide me, direct me to what church I should go to. And then go there, not with a critical spirit, but pray that the Holy Spirit um, speaks to you and helps you to see if that's the church you're supposed to be and you know obviously continue to pray about it but we really encourage you guys not to just be um constantly just watching through youtube and that like we love that you guys can watch and be involved but that shouldn't be your church and so anyway if you haven't already please make sure to like subscribe and share this video you also if you want to listen to us wherever you get your podcast just type in calvary conversations also we have our new merch so in the description below you can go down below and where it says new merch Click on where it says um, Teespring and then you can order your t-shirt. So that will help you know us to continue to get more content out and different things. And also, if you want to see the behind the scenes, go to Instagram and follow us at Calvary Conversations. And we just pray that you continue to get that accountability and underst understand how important it is to be committed to church. We love you guys and we'll see you next week.